Angie Williams de Vries here, uh, bringing you on request um, a tutorial on Scaramouche by Mio. Um, this is the clarinet version of it. I know there's a saxophone version of it as well that I've also played. So uh, this piece is uh, relatively difficult. Um, I think between 10 and 15 especially when you've got those sort of um, uh, chords that are slightly off the beat um, and also breathing is interesting too um, and a good way to sort out the breathing is actually to play it slow and work out I mean I would try hard not to breathe before bar 9 um, but I'm going to help you learn the piece by playing it slowly um, and doing it even less than half tempo. So I was doing it about 120 that time. We're going to take that back to 60. And I'll show you a few things. So, first your bars. <laughs> Now, make sure that you get a really good connection between the C-sharp and the B. I know it's difficult, you know, I probably need to get my clarinet re-tuned, but... Now, um, I tend not to go with the pinky key on the D, it goes so fast anyway, but going from the C-sharp to the D, I will just uh, lift all the fingers off, so... So it's good to practice it this slow uh, to get uh, really good connections between the notes. And um, well, you could take a breath here, I wouldn't. Um, we're already at half speed anyway. So this next little bit is like, it's a little bit easier. At the end of bar five, used the forked A sharp. So if we take that from the beginning, I would also prefer to keep the A sharp in the left hand. to keep this as smooth as possible so that when so even though you're changing registers try to make it sound as if you're not and I probably would breathe actually at bar nine so um, let's take it from the beginning again at that slow speed. crescendo decrescendo there in bar six. I would leave the pinky key off 
so that you can get to the C. So from the bar before. is a typo because F sharp is the same as G flat I'm assuming that is actually a uh, G sharp but let's go back to this little passage it's fun because um, you've sort of got this three note riff in the context of four semiquavers so it's sort of a hemiola <laughs> really um, might actually be not terribly bad way to practice that kind of makes more sense that way so in the context of Again, so I'd leave that little kinky key off the D. Um, so that's how I would um, approach practicing this bit. Practice in triplets. So. I think is the way to go. So let's go on. Let's go on from 10. If you um, really look at my throat uh, and jaw is that they're very very relaxed because otherwise you'll be hitting not throat tones but uh, overtones so squeaks so going you don't want to you don't want to be doing that so very relaxed through here said as much as I want to say about that bit. Now, at 16, you will need to finger out the A sharp because um, Well, you don't have to, but I find it easier to go from, say, a B natural to an A, the B natural to the A. So, now at 16, we kind of run out of pinky keys unless you've got the extra um, E flat G sharp key. So, what I would do is from the G sharp slide down to the F sharp in the right hand. And so that can be done at high speed. It can be done, but at the slower speed. It's not quite an issue yet, but um, 
you want to be have a really really light um, and if you look at my various staccato videos you will know how I do that and the way I do it is called double staccato not double tonguing double staccato so and you can get your staccato quite quick that way it comes back a little bit later so let's go from 16 again found it very difficult on saxophone because I always had a lot of trouble um, with the lower notes on the saxophone and that's because I've got such a pretty full-on setup on my clarinet. So and again we've got this hemiola thing happening Um, which you could easily um, and you can really emphasize that hemiola now in bar 28 again we've got rapid changes of register you don't want the you don't want your audience to know that. And again, very relaxed here through 27. And then there's a slight um, row through there. For the E to F sharp I would just lift up the finger because when you're playing it at top speed all right now the bit after the R tempo I think is not uh, a great difficulty just make sure you get a nice connection between and then just a straight chromatic now I'll play this at the, at the quickest speed um, I mean, there are different ways you can play this bit. Um, I know that Mio is a pretty sort of fun composer. Um, I don't know if you ever saw Scaramouche the movie, actually, with Stuart Granger. Um, but uh, that movie is a lot of fun. Um, this next bit between 40 and 50, I kind of equate to kids in the playground going, um, that's just me. I've heard um, clarinet players play this very smoothly, and I suppose the tenutos would indicate that. Um, doesn't mean you can't have fun with it. So I'll take it at the speed. So I would play it. That playfully. Right now we're going from uh, 48 uh, through to 70. Um, and the best way to practice these runs, I actually go 3 4, so. It helps to pulse them. But 
but it's better to play it slowly. I think that's a G natural. And again, you've got this. first with so I'm deliberately playing these out of time and then for rest. Um, these, these three bars are about the most rest you get in the entire piece and again you're ripping through different registers but you don't want your audience to know that. top drill key. And you see what I mean by if you don't drop the jewel that the A will come out as an overtone. metronome up now uh, 8 beats I tend to like to do and um, we'll now do it at 68 and we'll see how we go
together. I haven't got the breast yet. It's it's too slow to, to um work those out. You get a little breath here, I suppose. And I'll just ignore the rest. And then Um, we'll leave that bit out and we'll just go to these runs. is um, quite unprecedented and then we come back to Which is actually what I started practicing that at. Which is what I started practicing that at actually um, earlier this afternoon. All right, so let's take this at eighty, and then I'll just move it up in sort of. Um, I'll move it up in sort of tens.
just going to um up to 100 because that's where I finished practicing it at so I should be okay um, and then I'll maybe whack it up to about 2,000 uh, 112 uh, ideally you probably want to go about 144 but 132 to 144 so this is another 100 <laughs> Okay, 
and again um, I'll just leave out the rest This is actually probably the hairiest bit See at see what I sound like at a hundred and
now the um the last hair a little bit. for memorization because uh, there's really no time when you're playing this at full speed to work out the notes you virtually have to and that's how it goes but um, so that's um, that's the first movement um, starting at a really slow speed uh, so I do hope that you got something out of that um, and I'll see you for the second movement, which thankfully is a lot easier. Thanks for listening and bye for now.